One of my favorite ideas in Magic is the torn and restored playing card. However, this trick doesn't really fit into my repertoire too well, but it might be useful for somebody watching this video right now. So I have a torn nine of clubs and using a method of magic, I can fix this nine of clubs. And if I do it just right, it will look like real magic. Damn it, let me try again. If I do this just right, Charlie, I can actually make people believe that magic is real. You know what? When a magic trick goes wrong, especially a trick like this, it's often easier to just poke fun at yourself, which I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fix this nine of clubs and I'm gonna do it with the help of some sticky tape. Just like this. Nine of clubs restored. A fixed nine of clubs with thanks to black tape. And then I hear somebody in the crowd say, if you were a real magician, you wouldn't need the tape to fix the card. To which I reply, you're right. I am a real magician. I don't need the tape. The tape was merely a distraction. I am Daniel Madison, and this is The Men. I am Daniel Madison. Welcome back to The Madhouse. This is a tutorial for a trick called Mend. This trick didn't fit into my repertoire can't find a good way of performing this in my style, but still, I wanna offer it to you because I know that there's a lot of magicians out there who this would appeal to. It's a very comedic and comical idea that gets a few laughs and creates a moment of misdirection with those laughs for the dirty work, for the switch itself, the card switch. Nobody sees the switch because they're too busy enjoying the comedy of the moment of using sticky tape to fix torn playing card and of course there is a kicker where the card in the end actually does end up being fixed the method that i'm going to show you i would say that it's one of the most challenging methods in terms of sleight of hand there are much easier ways to achieve this so i'm going to show you the difficult one first the one that i performed just now for this video and then we'll go over a few that are so much easier where you don't need to do to do the switch that i did the mad switch that's how i achieved this and just before we get into it the reason that i made this video the last video that i made repair you know watching back on that especially on the performance section i wasn't too happy with it but i still wanted it wanted to share it with you so let me just talk for a moment about why i wasn't happy like when you watch the performance of that the camera blurs at the moment of the switch so it could look like i'm doing that on purpose i'm creating the blur to hide the move uh, it's not the case it's just the camera that i chose to use on that day also there's a lot of shade there's a lot of that my hands are naturally in the way of everything when i'm doing the trick and there's not an easy way around that i mean it, it's certainly a torn and restored method that i like and it's something that that is my go-to torn and restored when i'm at say a restaurant sat across the table from somebody but i know it's not perfect i know it's flawed and i'm um, watching back on the video just made me want to make up for it and that's why we're here hopefully this can kind of make up for it in a way if not this is why i'm offering like quite a lot of these torn and restored especially corner torn and restored videos i think my past four or five tutorials have been on how to restore a torn corner of a playing card so you've got a whole choice and to be completely honest like over any torn and restored corner i would always stick to angle zero we'll talk about that at some other time so most people won't need this um explaining because it's uh it's quite easy to understand but i'm going to do a full run through anyway so i've already got my torn nine of clubs i don't want to tear another because i've torn too many cards so i'm just going to use this from the start we need a duplicate I've got a duplicate nine of clubs i've got a torn nine of clubs i'm going to take about two inches of black tape. This is electrical tape. The reason I'm using black tape, by the way, is because it shows up so much easier on camera. I first tried it with this clear tape and it's invisible. It's designed to be invisible so you can barely see it on the card anyway. I wanted this to really stand out and be bold. And the only way to do that was to find some black electrical tape. So I'm gonna put the tape in a very specific position, not just over the a tone corner, but let me put it down first and then I can show you. So a few things to note. Firstly, 
it's barely over this side. It's just kind of touching. And I've intentionally left a pointy bit of the tape here that protrudes the top of the card, that hangs over the top of the card. And it's about two inches of sticky tape. I have my deck on the card table right here. And I put this card down like this. So the tape is towards me and it's here. Now the deck is in a position set up for a table mad switch for this switch at some point i have to rest my hands on the table and pick that card up secretly in a tenkai palm like this so i have to make sure the deck's in the right position for that and this is the right position for this i mean i could have it over here and still achieve the same thing but it's, i found it's much more natural if it's off to the side a little bit and now my hands can just rest naturally and then i can steal a card secretly take a card so that's ready now i need my tape and skizzers on standby and i have them off to the side where nobody can see them because i don't want anyone to preempt or know what's coming up so i present it as a serious trick in this case i'm just going to pretend to tear this card but actually tear your card for your performance so um i really like these ideas of torn and restored playing cards especially the torn Corner. So from the beginning, I'm presenting it as if it's a really serious thing. I mean, I know in this video I did say that this isn't for me, this is for, for you, but the way you would present this is if it's really serious and bring a lot of attention to it. And, and, and especially this moment where we're pretending to reattach those fibers and the more we can make it look like we're actually doing it, the better for the trick. Because it's quite a funny moment when we say, and just like that, it looks like real magic. You're going to get some laughs from that. You're going to get a kick from that. And then it's going to be, oh no, uh, let me try again. And I think it's important that you try again too, because even though they're laughing, even though people are going to get a kick from that, you want them to think that you are actually trying to do this. And as a magician, especially if they've seen you before, they'll know that you can do this kind of stuff. So go back to it and keep serious. Don't make, don't make comedy out of it intentionally. So Charlie. If I do this just right, I can actually fix that card and it looks like real magic. Now I like it when this happens, when the corner actually balances because you can really get your audience thinking, is it fixed? It doesn't look like it's fixed and then the corner falls off and you're like, damn it. Do you know what? I'm gonna use a more practical method. At this point, we admit defeat and we reach into our pocket or off to the side and find some sticky tape and scissors. Now, it's important that this tape is about the same length as this tape now. I've done this quite a few times, as you can see, practicing and learning. So I've got a whole bunch of two inch sticky tape, so I, I can take a good guess at what two inches. Don't be rude, Charlie. So I cut my two inch, ouch. And then I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna fix the nine of clubs, making sure that the tape goes on in the same way as it is on this card. So I'm just going from memory. This tape's a little bit short, but it doesn't really matter. Just like my other two inch. Even though there's a discrepancy in the size of the tape, I don't mind in this case, and I'll explain why afterwards. So I'm gonna put this back on top. So it's important that I leave the tape right here in front of my left shoulder, in line with my left shoulder. This is for the mod switch. So the deck here, the tape here, the card fixed here. Now, once I've put the tape on, firstly, you wanna show it, of course. You wanna show it like this. While I'm showing the card to my audience, I'm gonna relax this hand and it's gonna connect with the deck and I'm gonna secretly steal or Tenkai Palm that nine of clubs. But I'm doing, I'm gonna do it in a very natural way. So I've fixed the card. I hold it out for inspection as I chill out and relax to stop anybody looking over here and wondering what I'm doing over here, which they shouldn't be me because my hand is dead still, it's not moving. I'm gonna turn this around, show both sides. I show the back. Now I turn it over this way because I need the tape to be at the bottom. I need it to be at the bottom to match this. Now I'm gonna bring it over here and I'm gonna to point to it with this hand. So I'm gonna pick up this card in Tenkai, close my fingers. I can further hold that nine into my hand and I'm gonna to point to the nine of clubs and I'm gonna say, I managed to fix the nine of clubs using sticky tape. So now I've got a fixed nine of clubs and that is the switch. So I've managed to switch that card, which is now being lapped. 
over here. So I'll do a quick explanation of that. There's a full tutorial on this. I've taught this quite a few times. It's called the Mad Switch. I first taught it as a deck switch. This is how I switch an entire deck of cards, but it's more prominently useful for a single card switch. So as long as the tape is at the bottom to match the tape at the bottom here, obviously if you want to do it the other way around, put the tape to the top. The reason I don't do that because I've left that bit sticking out on top, that point, which we'll get to in a moment, and it can be seen from the front. That's the only reason why I put it to the back. So I show this, I pick up that nine of clubs from the deck, I fixed, and it's here, look. So I fixed the nine of clubs. As I reach to point to the tape, my behavior, my body moves like this. So my, I'm not gonna keep my body still as I do this, because it looks weird. So I'm, I'm using my body, I'm letting my body move freely to point to the tape. This causes this arm to move backwards towards the edge of the table. This hand going in front of the deck and across my body to this gives me loads of shade. And now when I'm here pointing at this, look where this card is. It's pointing back towards this hand. The switch can happen at a few different moments. For me, I prefer it if I can have the card back here, I'm gonna kick it off the edge of the table. And as this hand's working its way across, I'm just gonna pinch that card out like this. As I touch this, now when my hand moves out of the way, it still looks like the same card. It is the same card as far as they're concerned. It's a line of clubs with tape on it, but the switch has been achieved. So I'll do that in a way that is exposed. So the nine, I've picked up the nine already from the deck. I fixed the nine of clubs, the card is here, using, see the card fell off the table. I grab this here as I point to this. So now this hand can just move freely out of the way to reveal this card once again. So what, even if this card goes out of sight, of the audience when I move my hand back. They're still seeing the same image. It's still the Nine of Clubs with tape on it. And we're now clean. We have a completely restored card. We have the tape on the table and tape on the front. If your audience is close enough, if you've done this for a close-up setting, please don't take the tape off of yourself. Leave it on the table, leave it on the card table, sit back and invite somebody to come along and take the tape off. Uh, and that is exactly why I left that point on the on the tape so that it's so much easier to peel off rather than trying to scrape it off the face of the card this way you can just grab it it makes life easy for yourself and just peel it all the way off and you have a restored nine of clubs because you've lapped the other nine of clubs and in my case it fell to the floor there's nothing to find there's nothing there's no discrepancies anywhere and you've taken a comedic comedy moment and you've turned it into something serious that they're going to ask holy swear word how the hell did you do that? Just to quickly show you that without the lapping, you don't have to do the lapping with this. So you could do this stood up, stood at a bar, as long as you have a surface for all these pieces. Same again, nine of clubs on top of the deck, the restored nine. I show the fixed nine. I do the switch as I point to the tape, but in this case, I'm holding the other card in a gambler's cop. So I've done the same switch, but instead of lapping this card, I've just allowed it to the back of my hand and then I've grabbed this card as it's gone over like this. This is taught in so much more detail in the mod switch itself, and the links are in this video description. But this means that you don't have to drop any cards to the table. So I can go from here, point to this here, and I can come back, take this card, and show it. As I go to my pocket for something, I can just keep it palmed until a moment when I can clean up. Now, I do want this to be a shorter video than usual, and I did say that I'm gonna offer you a few ideas on how to switch this in a much switch these two cards in a much easier easier way if you think about it you can use any card switch that you can think of that you can already do to switch these two cards that it's just two cards with black tape on just think of it like that so now we can do any change we want if you're holding the deck and you have this card on top ready and waiting you can just do a top switch because once we've changed it i can do the same thing and i can point to the i don't do a top the top switch by the way that that's why that was so terrible but I can go from here, come bring it back to the top of the deck, and then use the deck hand to point to this while I do the switch, and I've switched the card. The good thing about this, I can do it kind of face up, so I can show the card the whole time, like this, and show this card. I mean, point to the, this tape, and it should look like the same card. So if you have the restored card on top, the torn card, if you have a break under that top card, very simple break, if we take that 
restored card there might be a moment where we can bring it back to the deck the top of the deck is in yeah the trick's over but then we turn it face up so now all i've done is do is a double lift by the way the double lift masterclass is available at the alliance right now there's a link in the video description so all i've done is a double lift and you can see there's just two nine of clubs this should look like the same nine of clubs now how do i take this off of the top of the deck without anybody seeing the next nine like this so simple don't have to try and hide just keep this hidden face up on top of the deck. But seriously, think of any cards which you know, and almost every one of them is gonna work for this. So you just have to go through the motions first of sticking the tape on and then choose the switch that you wanna use and use it um, on a surface, especially because I've got an object there. Muck Shun works wonderfully for this because it still looks like the same item. So the switch doesn't look like a switch. It looks like you're just pushing the card away. But anybody who doesn't know Muck Shun, it is simply this. So I have the torn card on the surface here and I just push it and pushing it towards the tape. The tape stops it from sliding off the edge of the surface, but in the action I've switched the card and I've managed to lap the other card. There's a tutorial for Mugshun again, link in description, and it's almost 100% hands-free like, and that's what makes it so beautiful, I think, because how could you possibly have switched this card by just touching it with your fingernail, nothing but your fingernail? So I think Mugshun is a, a, a perfect switch for this trick. But if you're struggling with switches, just look through my channel. I've shared probably more card switches you know, on my channel than anything else, and I'm pretty sure that all of them would work well for this trick. So if you want to take a deeper dive into this, you want to see the extended cut of this video, head over to the Malliance Madison.ist. There's now a free tier at the Malliance, so you can join for free. There's no commitment. You don't have to sign up. Just click follow. You'll get to see everything that I share at YouTube before anybody else. You'll get to see what I share with the Malliance and you'll get to decide there and then whether you want to join up or not. Again, I'm not asking you to join. I'm just letting you know that that option is there. And finally, I have some huge news on the way i know i keep saying it but it's massive news and it affects the entire playing card industry and i can't wait to share it with you i'm going to share this news with the malines first before anybody else and even when i make it public it will be public at the malines first before youtube so if you want to know what's happening and if you want to be one of the first to um join me in that adventure just make sure you're at the malines don't need to sign up just be there you're right charlie i need to wrap things up thanks for spending this time with me. I'm Daniel Madison. That was The Mend. See you next time. Mad love.